never know You never know Alright, uh, hey folks, this is uh, David Olney and the name of the show is You Never Know um, see what happened May happened <coughs> month of May <coughs> uh, what's coming up this week May 8th through the 12th on tour in the Northeast US with Mark Douglas Berardo playing at O'Shea's in West Dennis Massachusetts the Turning Point in Piedmont New York Rosie's Cafe Concerts in Brick, New Jersey, Catherine Space House Concerts in New York City, and a special Mother's Day matinee at 4 p.m. at the Malted Barley and Westerly, Rhode Island. And after that, Sunday, May 26, Jammin' at Hippie Jack's Memorial Day Weekend Music and Camping Festival in Crawford, Tennessee. <clears throat> I'll be doing that with uh, the Jug Band, plus uh, Dan and I are going to be doing my stuff. So it's uh, it'll be a full weekend. All right, lots more dates posted online for later this year. Tickets and links, all things David Only at davidonly.com. Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to I'll do this song first, and. Uh, Lori Debo requested this, and I answer requests uh, if they're illegal. Okay, this old one, let's see if I can call, call this one back up. Well, I lost that gun for Pearl and the one He used to shine like new Yes, I lost it all When the cards wouldn't fall Like they're supposed to do Now all that I got left Is this a blood red rose tattoo
Well, from a head to a heel, my baby's so real, she ain't no hand me down. Yeah, wherever she be, you know she's always with me. Well, she's a part of me now. Me and my rose tattoo boys, uh, we don't Yes, I lost it all when the cards wouldn't fall like they supposed to do. Now all that I got left is this a uh, blood red rose tattoo. Yeah. Now all that I got left is this a uh, blood red rose tattoo. Well, made it. Uh, a little rusty on that one, boys, but uh, we got through. Uh, Rose Tattoo, that was on uh, uh, Roses. That was the album that was on. And, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Thanks for making that uh, request. I've forgotten that song, you know. I haven't played it in a long time. Now it's back in the, back in the radar screen. Okay, so I wanted to... Uh, I got a friend of mine, uh, Bob Longhauser, who performs under the name of uh, Cadillac Holmes. And he's a good friend, great guy, uh, someone who's just never calls attention to himself, but he's always got his, his uh, antenna out there picking up the vibe. And anyway, uh, this is, it's the, written these poems. And I wanted to read one. And he was—I was telling him about this the other day. This is from a real thing that happened when he was in uh, boot camp in North Carolina a long time ago. Fort Jackson, 1967. Smoke 'em if you got 'em. And our army issue fatigues outside the mess hall, waiting. Then comes the screaming, "Hurry up!" We scramble into a nervous formation bound for the rifle range. A red-faced corporal appears unannounced, shouts out cadence as we march along the path of red dust surrounded by tall southern pines. Someone, one of our own, suddenly shouts out, changes the cadence. Instinctively, we chime in unison, our sweat-soaked voices bark at the blazing sun. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. The nameless corporal is not amused. He ignores us. It is June 1967. Six months from now, all of us, every swinging dick, will onboard at Bien Hoa with a duffel bag and a wristwatch. So uh, that's cool to me. It's these soldiers getting ready to head off to Vietnam back then. You know, and they're all, one, two, three, two, my God, do, 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 do. you know, the corporal doing that. And then in the, it being the 60s and it being the time that it was, someone answering back, we all live in a yellow submarine. He said it was true. And, uh, and Bob Longhauser, Cadillac Holmes, always tells the truth. Okay, now there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, the, I went to the craft fair that comes to town uh, a couple of times a year. And there's a guy, I can't call up his name, but he, his, uh, his business is called Fleur, Fleur de, de Glass. F-L-E-U-R. D-E-G-L-A-S. It's like French. And he uh, does these things. They're beautiful. They're, uh, takes flowers 
It might sometimes it's just one flower. It might be a Queen Anne's lace blossom, and he puts it between two pieces of glass, welds it up, and boom! It's just they're just beautiful. I've been buying these things for years. And anyway, I got in a conversation with him, and I said, "You know, how did you get into this? How did you even think this up?" And he was a surfer, and uh, he ended up out in uh, Hawaii, and his two passions were surfing and gardening. And he had a friend who uh, uh, did stained glass stuff, and he hit on the idea of, you know, using the stained glass technique, but two pieces of glass, and putting a flower. And the thing he said he noticed was that people would come to his garden. He, he grew uh, carnations and uh, other sort of, you know, big flowers. And they would want to take pictures of them, and they'd, they'd step on these beautiful little flowers to take a picture of a big flower. And it really bothered him. And he thought, I, I need to do something to let people know that the little flowers are as important as the big flowers. And this wasn't some, you know, uh, hippy dippy fly by night. This is like a surfer. This is hang ten type guy. And uh, so we started putting these little flowers in between two pieces of glass. And the motive, he wasn't even thinking about, you know, I can make money off of this. He was just thinking, I need to advertise these little flowers so that people know about them. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another, and he ends up in Bell Buckle, Tennessee, and he's got a whole place, I've got to go see this, uh, where he grows all these flowers. And then he picks them, and he puts them, and he makes these beautiful things. And if you can remember it, Fleur de Glass, look it up, F-L-U-E-R, D-E, Glass, G-L-A-S. And uh, you'll see these beautiful things that he makes. Anyway... I figure uh, that if there's anything to this uh, heaven stuff, that guy probably is going to go there. Uh, and if he doesn't go, I don't want to go. Okay, so uh, I'll see you next time around. You never know. You never know. You never know.